Yeah. All good? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Ah, it's a nice. Oh, finally, nice you got it. <laughs> Technology works. Oh. <laughs> so how are you doing, guys? We're good. We're good. We we just had um, two nights in a hotel, which is a bit of a luxury. But we wanted to catch up on our vlog, and I kind of think when you we've had a bit of a break in London, and so when we we feel like we've just started again, and it just takes you a few days to get back into the groove of camping and everything and being organized and yeah we, we didn't have any wi-fi we wanted to let the family know how we were getting on so yeah feeling really good today we say today coming up 65 miles today to do so how many k uh, yeah 65 miles today. 65 miles all right um in kilometers so it's like 100, about 100. 100. Yeah, about 100K. 100K, 100K, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just before we get started, can you tell us a little bit more about you guys and how you meet? Right, okay. So um, I'm Debbie, or Debs. Um, I'm um, from a small town in the east of England called Scarborough. I've lived there all my life. I ran a, a bike shop with my ex for nearly 40 years. And they used to have all these customers coming in with their bikes touring and and I thought I wanted some of that. Um, I've um, got I've got no kids. I'm one of five five of us in our family, but I've got loads of nieces and um, a couple of nephews as well. And um, yeah, just had quite a, an uneventful life, really. So until I met Tom, <laughs> <laughs> did you meet? Uh, yeah, and then the adventure begins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm Tom. So. Uh... I've, I lived in Scarborough for 20 years. I moved about a bit with work. Um, I work in sort of environmental fields, designing parks and play areas and uh, heritage conservation projects and things like that. So, uh, but very excited to get onto the road now because uh, I had enough of working for a bit. So, <laughs> so where did you, you two meet? So, yeah, in Scarborough, 12 years ago now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Years. So, uh, we had a mutual friend, uh, and um, I knew of Debbie, and she was into a 24-hour mountain bike racing at the time, uh, endurance solo mountain bike racing. I thought, wow, that's 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 something. I want to meet this lady. And so this mutual friend kind of set up a, uh, 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 not a date, but we would be in the pub at the same, in the same pub at the same time. Uh, and we got chatting and hit it off straight away, you know, straight away from the moment we met, didn't we? And uh, I always tell this story because, the night that we met, we, I mean, we chatted all night, but uh, I knew she was the one for me because at the time, as I say, she used to do a lot of mountain biking, but she lived in a flat without a garden. And she told me that she washed her mountain bike after she came back from mountain biking. She washed the bike in the bath. And I thought any girl that washes a bike in the bath is the girl for me. So <laughs> from that moment, I knew she was the one. <laughs> do you mind to come a little bit closer maybe from your computer? Yeah. Because the, yeah, sound, um, the sound is a bit uh, yeah. far away. I don't know if all the people will be able to un- listen to you. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's better. Yeah, oh, we, that's better. we just got one chair. Is better as well. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> so, uh, when did you guys start traveling? Well, we um, we we did our first tour in England back in about ooh, about fourteen years ago. It was my friend Jackie's fiftieth birthday, and she wanted to ride. And it's called the Jog. It's Lands End to John O'Groats, which is the, from the bottom of England to the top of Scotland. Oh, and right. um, so we we joined in on that. It was um, we had assistance on that tour, but it got us, you know, into the repetitive day in day out, just cycling. Um, and it really, really formed the desire to get going. Really, um, yes, yeah, so that was our first tour. We How many kilometers was that? It was probably about 1,600, 1,600, 1600 kilometers. Yeah. yeah. 1,600 miles. Yeah. Kilometers. It was about 1,000 miles. Yeah. 1,100 miles, something like that. So it wasn't a big, big tour. You know, it was, we did it over just under three weeks. Yeah. About two, yeah. About three weeks. But it was, it, it, yeah, it, it set the fires burning, got the design going. So the, this was your first trip and your first cycling trip. But did you do maybe backpacking before or something like this? We did very crazy. No, we didn't do a lot. I, I spent all my time mountain biking um, and Tom spent all his time running. And so when we met, I got him to 
enter some mountain bike 24 hour mountain bike racing and he got me running marathons hmm. and right. um so the, <laughs> <laughs> so the touring's quite different isn't it really for us yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, well, what marathon was that well we i did i ran um i ran about 10 marathons and, oh, wow. and, tom, and my first one oh well hang on my first one was in chicago with tom which was great but tom tom really was into marathons so he did a lot more i think about 60 or so Marathons. 64 marathon. Yeah, and some ultras, you know where they go. 100k oh. on the... On what was your best uh, time? Uh, 340. I was never very fast, but uh, I a... just used to like doing them. I wanted to try and get to 100, but the body gave up first. So. All right. <laughs> I, did, I did only one marathon in uh, 10 years ago, but I did not... I never ran in my life. It's just my friends. No. Said, oh, there is a marathon in three weeks. You want to do it? I said, oh, let's do it. And we yeah. just trained for three weeks. We finished it in five hours and couldn't walk for three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that thing. I, know that I mean, thing. training. We were like running 10 kilometers and drinking a pack of six beers. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was it's a tough, a tough was event, the marathon, but good. It's but really do you have a, do you <laughs> prepare yourself when you go cycling? Did you train before you go or you just, just hit the road? I think and, I, I think I, I mean, I because I've cycled so much all my life, and, and the mountain biking is kind of good endurance. What I did was a really good endurance sport. So I, I think you sort of absorb that into your your body, into your psyche. But the the run up to actually the tour wasn't brilliant. We had COVID, so we had the, you know well, we had COVID ourselves. We weren't very well with that. We've had the two years of lockdown virtually. So yeah, yeah. And the government wasn't encouraging you to go. You couldn't go anywhere. Um, and I wasn't actually that well for a few months before we set off. So we were both overweight and unfit. So, no, we didn't prepare very well at all. <laughs> no, and the day we set off, you know, we, we'd got all the bags packed and everything ready. And everyone says you should do, you know, do a prepare to a weekend or a week just to, with your gear to test it all out. But the day we set off was the first time we'd ridden with all the bags on the bike. It was like we'd done no preparation at all. No, we, and it was quite a shock because you got on the bike and obviously they're very heavy. So yeah, we were yeah, wobbling yeah. around and thinking, well, what have we done? Can we do this? Can we ride this bike? But you soon get used to it. And, yeah. and we you got carry much way, weight? You know, like, yeah. Probably more than a lot of people. Um, we are refining it, but um, we like our, a little bit of comfort. So we've got a three-man tent rather than a two-man tent. We carry the Helinox chairs so we can have a, something to sit on we've got we carry a stove good sleeping bag so we're warm not got a lot of clothes and things like that but it all adds up it all adds up the weight so yeah, yeah, yeah. we keep refining um i'm going to lose a pair of shoes um each, each time each tour each month we keep thinking yeah we've not used that but also we've we've prepared for around the world so we've got some winter kit which we don't need in florida you know but and people say, oh, send it on, but it's kind of like, well, where to? And we don't quite know when we're going to need it. So we just carry, you know, for a lot of weather conditions. Yeah. How many kilograms do you think you're, you're carrying at the moment? I'm just thinking when you pack the I bags. Think, I think yeah. uh, with, the, with the bikes included, I think my rig's about 50 kilograms and Deb's maybe 30, maybe 40. 50, yeah, 50 start, to be, start to be a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot. Too. But as we say, it's all the winter gear and it's it's our whole belongings now because we've rented our house out at home and we live on the road, you know. So it's uh it's it's everything we own is on the bike. <laughs> so it's liberating. Sorry. It's very liberating not yeah, having yeah. any possessions. It's really so good. How long have you been on the road now? For how many months? We set off last June, so I guess about eight months really. Eight so months, we did have a yeah. short break. Yeah, we had a short break in London. A lot of people want to know as well, when they want to do a long trip like this, how you do it financially. Like, did you work before, save money, and decided to, to yeah. put it all well, on your we, trip, or how do you do it? Well, when we met, um, literally six weeks after we met, we opened a joint savings account and started putting money in every single month for the trip. Um, so that we thought we had 12 years of savings. And um, being so old, um, we've paid off the mortgage at home. So we've rented out the house. 
And so we've got some savings and we've got a regular, not big income, but a regular, you know, monthly income. And um, we just budget well. You know, we don't go out for coffees during the day. It's very rare we would go out. We wouldn't go out for a meal unless we have a treat in a hotel. Yeah, yeah. And although, and the, the longer we're on the road, the less you need, you know, you get, you adapt. So we, um, you know, if you want a cup of tea, we, we brew, put the stove on and brew it up. Um, we do all our own food. So often, even if we do stay in a hotel, so we can do some editing and stuff or a, we, we, we eat it, but, you know, we make our own food in the room, things like that. Don't get me wrong, we do have the odd treat, but um, mm. we budget every day. You've got to. Because you do a lot of wild camping as well. A lot yeah. of wild camping, yeah. We've That's just, good. I think at the minute, being in Florida, <laughs> apart from the alligators, you know, we don't want to go, it's not encouraged to go wild camping here. So it's a little bit harder. Um, but we, that's our preferred way is, is to wild camp. And we've been encouraged that, um, it, that we will be able to do that soon and getting lots of advice from people. It's just finding your way in a new country. It takes a few days to find out how things really work. You can do research before you get here, but until you're actually in the country and start talking to people, you don't really know what's accepted and what isn't. And, um, and it seems to be, certainly in Florida, or the really populated areas, so wild camp's quite difficult, but we know you can go to the local fire station and often you can camp there. Um, and in the national parks, they have an overflow sort of camping area. Um, it's just being in the right area at the right time, to, you know, so it's just, just slowly building up really our confidence as well. Are you using as well maybe warm shower or something like this or other yeah, websites? Yes. Yeah. We've, we've always used warm showers. We joined warm showers about seven years ago. Um, so we've had people staying with us before we did our trip. We've had two warm showers so far in America, and, and they've been great, really friendly, helpful people. Yeah, and I love the fact with warm showers, you sort of transport it straight into local life and someone's house. You know, it's like you go to a campsite, you chat to people, it's, you get a flavour of what it's like in the country. But to be sat in somebody's kitchen and chatting around the family table, it's just you're immersed in that country. It's fantastic, especially in places like Spain and France where it was a whole new language for us, you know. So I love that about warm shower. Yeah. So for the for the people who doesn't know warm shower, warm shower is for cyclists and it's a little bit like couch surfing, but for cyclists. So people will yeah. invite you in their house and they will give you a shower and a bed sometime. And if you don't have a bed, you can pitch your tent in their garden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a pretty good thing. I, I did a few warm showers as well on my previous second trip, and you always meet good people as well. And they, I think they always try to to help you because they are cyclists themselves. So this is a yeah. good yeah. good thing as well. Yeah. Do, do you yeah. find uh, wild camping hard because you are now maybe a little bit older than youngsters that will be doing wild camping? <laughs> and do, do you think that you, you have maybe back pain or is it, do you find it hard to do wild camping now or is it something you don't mind? Uh, um, I, I don't. Um, no. We've got it. We, the other thing with the weight is we carry, a, you know, a blow up mattress and um, so that helps and um, you get used to it, you know, I, got, well, I won't say every now and again when I have to get off the floor, I don't groan a bit, but um, But no, no, it's not too bad. I think it can be tough living in the tent for a long time, but uh, you get used to it. But now, I mean, after a week of camping, I I got used to it so much that now I prefer to sleep on the floor than in a bed. You know, I mean, I've always suffered with a bad back, but now a nice hard mattress or or the floor with the thin airbed uh, suits me down to the ground. In a tent of safety, you're okay as well. Yeah, we've never had any trouble, have we? You know, I mean, sometimes farmers and people have come up and said hello and. They've all been very welcoming, haven't they? I mean, we always try and find somewhere that would f- seem appropriate. You know, we don't go over gates and into places yeah. where they're growing or uh, have animals and things like that. But uh, what was the longest time you spent without shower? I think five, six days. Yeah, maybe, maybe five or six days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not, days. not too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, but, my longest uh, time was two weeks when I well, crossed the Gobi yeah. Desert in in Mongolia, there was absolutely no hotel, no nothing there. And when you start smelling yourself, it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's bad, really bad. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the reasons my wife don't want to come with me is because she needs to take showers every day. 
and yeah. uh, she's not gonna come uh, right <laughs> in. So you're lucky, mate. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, I'm very lucky. Yeah, you're very lucky. True. So yeah. how, how many countries have you visited so far? Um, I uh, think we, we did um, Ireland, Ireland, France, Spain, and then the UK. And now we're in America, so five, I guess, so far. So just at the five start, countries really. Five yeah. countries, yeah. yeah. What was your more. most memorable place so far? Well, for you? I think Ireland, for me. Uh, I'd never, you know, so close to the UK where we lived, but I'd never been to the Republic of Ireland. And, uh, it was just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And, and wild camping there is almost encouraged. I mean, we were, one of my most memorable moments, I guess, was... Uh, We were at this castle, a place called Doe Castle in, uh, in County Sligo, about 6 p.m. And we were looking for somewhere to wild camp. And uh, the lady came with the key, the gatekeeper to lock the castle up because we were looking around this wonderful ruined castle. And we said to her, oh, we're looking for somewhere to wild camp. She says, oh, well, you could camp in the castle. She says, I'll have to lock you in and I'll be back at 9.30 in the morning to let you out. But you're welcome to, keep, to sleep in the castle. So <laughs> we got locked inside the castle yeah. and had a place for ourselves. It was fantastic. Uh, and you know, she, you, that would never happen in England, I don't think, but in, no. in, in Ireland, they're just, you know, what about you, Deb? So. For me, I think the most memorable um, places, it's more the, the experiences with the people in those places. So, but the country, my favorite country, I would say, would be Spain. Spain. Um, yeah, the, um, it was just a surprise, but it had so much. I, I didn't like the tourist part of Spain. And we didn't really spend much time there. But the um, all the geology and, oh, it's just fantastic. Uh, everywhere you went, it was a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You know, it was just amazing views that, that we saw eagles and vultures. And not just one or two, but so many just soaring above us. Um, quiet, the yeah. roads were so quiet. If you want to go bike touring and just got one country to go in, then the... Spain is unbelievable. That, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. When the roads start being busy and you have a lot of trucks, <sighs> that's not enjoyable at all. We could ride on a, a, a main, what seemed to us to be like a main road for all day and see a handful of cars in fact. Uh, it was incredible. We could sit down and eat our lunch in the middle of the road if we wanted. And that's a proper road, you know. Um, yeah. it, it, it almost got monotonous it was just too much to be true you know it was absolutely <laughs> fantastic but, what about the yes, language barrier that was kind of it, it you did feel a little bit isolated from a good conversation with people but we just made a good effort we we downloaded a, an app duolingo um uh, which so we sort of practiced spain spanish every day with that and we um we just you know sign language is very good you know, pointing and just, you just need the odd word because we went into quite remote areas where they didn't really speak any English yeah. and you just had to smile a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um, learn the odd <laughs> word and they appreciated it. And yeah. So it, it just added to it. Yeah. Didn't oh, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, did you have any issue like being robbed or being mugged and this kind of thing on the road or nothing so far? We, nothing so far. Although I, I guess I could, tell you a tale about somebody we met. Um, we, we rode with a young guy called Stefan for a few days and he'd been, he'd, so he'd had quite a few disasters. He'd lost his Garmin, he had his mobile phone stolen and then somebody stole his wallet as well. On, so these things, three separate things with his passports, he had no ID, no money. And he had a tiny little mobile phone so he could bring home, but that was all, uh, but no internet access. And he had like a moment or two of panic. And then he just calmed down and thought, no, I'm going to carry on traveling. I'm going to get home with nothing yeah. and just rely on the kindness of strangers. And, and that's what he did. And he had a, a little, he wrote a letter in Spanish to say, I've been robbed. He had a letter from the police and people just fed him, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, he, so there's ways around it, but we've been lucky. I think it helps that there's two of us. So, One of us can look after the bikes while the other one goes shopping. That happened to Stefan in a, in a big city, you know, having his stuff robbed. And I think that's where you've got to be extra you, careful. Do you keep your, your passport always with you or you have a special compartment for your passport and money, a bit of expensive yeah, belongings, I mean, maybe? 
we just keep it all in the handlebar bag. So, you know, it's quite vulnerable in a way, but we lock it up if we go anywhere and or if we're going far from the bike, we'll probably take it in my pocket, but try and keep it with us. We have uh, a couple of hundred dollars stuffed up the seat tube of the bike. Uh, All right. Imagine, you know, <laughs> yeah. That's with, that's like, a good idea. That's a good yeah, idea. I, I mean, thought about this. Got, I never thought about. Yeah, this. we've got uh, some the spokes. There's replacement spokes, so about a dozen dozen spokes wrapped around uh, two hundred US dollars. So hopefully we'll get around the whole world and not have to open that seat tube, but it's there if we needed to. But that's a good tip. That yeah, yeah, yeah. heard about it. So this is a really good tip <laughs> that people can. Tech not about this. It's a good, yeah. good idea, just in case you get mug and rob yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if the passport will fit, but. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, we've got um, all, all our sort of papers photocopied as well. Well, you know, we've got so my, we can access them off the internet. So if we did have our passport stolen, we can at least get a copy of it, you know, to help prove our ID and, and help sort things out as well. Well, what about your, your families and friends? Are they supportive in what you are doing? Yes, yes. I mean, we've left, Tom's got two parents who are both alive and they're in their 80s and my mum's in the late 80s now. And so it's been very hard for them. And that's one of the reasons we started our blog. Um, and they look at it every day so they can follow our journey. Uh, and friends are great. Um, I think they're all, it's the sort of thing so many people want to do, but to take that step, to move yeah. out, Yeah. of your home to leave all those comforts the security of a regular income and just to put yourself out there a lot of people just are very frightened of doing it and yet it's great it's a great it, it, you know it's got to be right for you but um yeah no good support good support but that's that's one of the hard things is leaving friends and family you know, for such a long time because you've got like the the births marriages and deaths thing yeah. you know people may have children get married people unfortunately may get ill or die and You may miss some of this stuff, but, you know, you, you can't be everywhere. <laughs> so where, where yeah. are you planning to go next? What's going to be the next country after where, where you are? So, uh, so we managed to get a six-month visa for the state. So the plan is to head west, sort of hugging the Gulf of Mexico until it warms up in spring, then up to Canada on the east of the Rockies, maybe three, four months in Canada, and then down the west coast of the states into Mexico. So Christmas in Mexico. Uh, and then all the way down to the bottom of uh, South America for, in another year. So, so you, you're planning to cross year. all Central America? As much as we can, you know, at some point, I guess, the Darien Gap, we've got to get the boat across. But, and, but as much as possible, we want to try and go the whole way down to the bottom of... Uh, yeah. of uh, you, you may Argentina. want to be careful over there, no? All yeah. Central America, like Honduras, or uh, what was the other one? Nicaragua, I heard that yeah. is... It's not very, very safe, but I think Costa Rica and Panama could be okay. But yeah. Honduras think, and Nicaragua, I don't, I don't, I heard bad things because I wanted to do yeah. it as well. And a lot of yeah. people discouraged me to do it and saying that it was, it was not safe at all to go there. But yeah. yeah, I think we'll just judge it as we go because I don't want, you know, I, I want to enjoy myself. Exactly. And if I'm going to a country and I feel unsafe, then we will bypass that country. Um, although, funnily enough, the first person we met and had a real good chat with in, in the States, he's from Honduras, you know, and said, I'll go stay with my mum. So there's mums in Honduras. It may not all be bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you planning maybe to that. write a book about your stories and everything, your journey? We, th we think about that. I mean, I write a daily blog so Tom's parents and my mum can read it. And so I've got a good... There'll be a lot of information there to build towards a book, I guess. It's um, whether I've got the talent or we've got the talent to do that. We'll say, hopefully, maybe. It would be nice to do that. So what, what is the name or where, where people can follow your adventures? What is the name of your blog and where can they find you? Well, everything's on the, our blog, which is debsandtom.com. So it's D-E-B-S-A-N-D-T-O-M. Yeah, I will add it in the description. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We have uh, we have like a Facebook page off that and a YouTube channel. We do a few videos and uh, uh, some photos as well, which is starting with Instagram. But uh, mostly it's the blog. It just is as much for our enjoyment as anybody, you know, because it's uh, when you're touring, it's obviously you forget where you were last week. And so it's an electronic diary for us, really, you know. 
but they have all the information on your blog anyway. So people can go to yeah. your blog and they can find all your Facebook yeah. page, Instagram, and YouTube channel. Yeah. All. yeah, everything links from there. Yeah. That's very yeah. good. That's very good. Um, do you have any advice for people who would like to start cycling touring that they didn't start yet and they want to cycle touring? What would you say to them? I'd say do it. <laughs> Don't put it off. <laughs> do it. You know, it's it's such a good life. I mean, it's hard, you know, with, like we were saying, living in the tent and being on a budget and cycling big distance every day, it's tough, but the rewards are just so worth it. You know, the people you meet, the places you see, um, it's just fantastic, you know, and don't put it off because that's the only advice I give because you'll find your own way when you set off and you, the ups and downs, you'll learn how to live, but don't put it off, you know, too long, do it because life's short. Yeah, it's, it's, and, and the best advice I was given by some random lady on Facebook was it's our journey, you know, we need to just you know so when you whatever you do you're doing it for yourselves you, so you don't have to ride big mileages because somebody else does you, you don't have to carry no kit but somebody else's does just do what feels right for you so with kit pack your stuff out lay it all out and then put half of it back in you know you, you don't need all this stuff i mean this top i've got on um in um it's the second one of these tops but if you see any of the videos you'll think just that woman have no other clothes you know because I just wear this top, it's merino wool, I wash it overnight. If it's wet in the morning in this country, it doesn't matter, it soon dries. You need very, very little in clothes. I used to run guided cycling holidays back in the UK, and I've got fewer clothes with me to cycle around the world than I did on a three-day trip across England. So, yeah, you don't need a lot. You can keep it <laughs> minimal. You look at our bags and you think, what's she saying? They've got a lot of kit, but we've got a lot of different things, haven't we? But, yeah, which do accumulate. But you don't need a lot of kids. Thank you very, very much for uh, coming today, guys. It was oh, a, thank you. Very, um, a lot of pleasure to having you on this podcast today. Ah, thank you. Thank you. It's and, our pleasure. And I wish you all the best, guys. Thank you so much. We thank really you very, very it. much, Devin Tom. Keep thank safe you. in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. All right. All right. I'm just going to switch it up the recording now.